Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the Director of Education at Stevenson Dental Solutions. I'm an emeritus professor, clinical dentist for UCLA, and I have a private practice located right here in our center where we spend most of our time teaching and treating patients. Today we're going to take a look at a root caries situation, otherwise known as the gingivally extensive margin elevation technique. So on this premolar, there's significant decay on the gingival third root area. Technically, this is root caries. It's not really class two caries. And we're going to try on some clamps and try to get access to this. Uh, one might argue you don't need a clamp at all, but we'd like to see if we can get a little more stability of the rubber dam. The problem with the W2 is we just can't get the handpiece back into the area that we need to work on. So let's try a double zero. This case would be a W00. And actually this is even worse. We can't get access at all in this particular area. No chance. So I have this clamp that I've developed called the PM18D. And this is a companion clamp to the one for the molar, which is called the 17. And we can try this and see if we can get better access. So I'm gonna hold this down, the plastic instrument and position it. And sometimes that distal bow will not engage the tooth. It doesn't really matter. If it does, great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. Just needs to be stable. But look at the access you have. It's, it's remarkable. It, it's really, truly a, a, you know, a wonderful thing to be able to get behind a tooth and yet still keep the rubber dam pushed down out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and prepare this tooth. Uh, I am doing this with the water off because this is a an extracted tooth mounted in the Tyconaut, so don't panic. I always use water, but I am going to do this dry so that you can see better. And I'm just making a preparation. It's like a class two that extends down gingerly to seek out the caries that we have located both on the occlusal and deep into that gingival third root surface area. The burr I like to use for most composites is a 330 diamond. Uh, I think it works out great. They, they come in different widths and different lengths, and you can find one that suits your needs, but I like the fact that they are pear-shaped, and I like the fact that they have a rounded end, which is very compatible with our composite restorations. Look at the caries in this tooth, uh, pretty significant. Uh, we're actually kind of concerned about the pulp in this particular case as well. And this is not a, an unusual finding for us to be working on a premolar that maybe was adjacent to a, a molar tooth that had to be extracted because of decay or a fracture or something like that. And we're restoring this before we move on to an implant. So we're now switching over to a KS0 burr. Thank you, John Coyce and Frank Spear for this burr. And you can see that we're getting rounded internal line angles with this, and yet it's long, so it extends deep, or I should say gingivally, towards the lesion. You know, when we use the word depth, we're talking about moving towards the pulp, whether it's pulpal depth or axial depth. So really, we, we shouldn't be calling these deep margin elevations. We should be referring to these as gingivally extensive margin elevations, hence the name GEEM. Just like an internet meme, this would be a GEME, G-E-M-E. -E. And I'm uh, kind of hoping that nomenclature sticks because it's definitely more technically correct when, with respect to nomenclature. And now we still have uh, lesions remaining internally, so we have a clean periphery in most of the preparation. So now we can turn our attention to the round burr on a slow speed. I like using electric and turning it down to probably somewhere between 1,000 and 5,000 RPM. I also use water spray and constantly check what I'm doing with respect to uh, the removal. Because with an electric, with all that torque, you could over remove if you're not careful. In a case where we're not gonna hit the pulp, uh, I like to generally get most of the carries out. Uh, if we were gonna hit the pulp, of course we would leave the carries, and not get a pulp exposure. I mean, in this particular case, uh, we are going to, I think, histologically expose the pulp. 
perhaps it's not being exposed on the pole horn in a, in a way which it bleeds, uh, but it is going to be uh, histologically exposing the pulp. So we're going to mitigate the pulp exposure. We're going to treat it with the appropriate, you know, therapeutic materials. Once again, uh, extending the outline further and then going back to Gary's removal. So skipping between GB Black Step 1 and GB Black Step 5, alternating between those steps as we slowly, surgically extend our boundaries. This is a, a detail-oriented procedure. It's uh, one that is quite rewarding when you can get past the carries. You can see that we're so translucent there. We're basically right on the pole porn just below there. So let's go ahead and place some MTA. The type of MTA I'm going to use in this example is one that comes out of a tube. Uh, there are many of these available. It is not technically the original MTA formula because that would have taken many hours to set. So this is a, a variant and these are very popular in the marketplace. And I think it's a good idea to, to go with these uh, because they're very practical. But the key is that you need to tack them down. You just can't now start etching and placing composite. You want to take some kind of material like a glass ionomer that's, that is not too viscous, something that flows, and just gently touch the tooth somewhere next to the MTA and let it flow over the MTA. I'm using here is a GC Fuji Lining LC. It's light curable. It uh, can just spread beyond the MTA and we can create a, a nice little base that tacks down the MTA. Don't make it too thick probably. About a half a millimeter is sufficient. The goal here is to remove the caries all the way down to the, to the root where it is and make, make a preparation that's caries specific, right? And then we're going to wrap a matrix band around the gingival portion on the root. And then that'll allow us to fill an increment and bring the, the margin into a more accessible area that can handle a regular matrix. So for that, I'm going to need to make a modified GEME matrix, a G-E-M-E -E matrix, and uh, just take the top off the, this Toffelmeyer band. I'm using a 0 .0015 band, so it's around 40 microns thick, and we're just going to cut the top off of this uh, with your Crown and Bridge scissors. Really easy to do. You can buy these commercially. Uh, Garrison Dental Solutions has excellent bands. Um, that have been designed and made. Uh, I, gosh, I've been making these for 25 years or so, and I've found that uh, never thought that these could ever be marketed because I thought every dentist would want to make them uh, to customize the situation they're in, whether it be thin or thick or in between. The key is you want to thin it and not just use a regular band so that it fits tightly around the neck of the tooth, around the root itself. And here we go. So I think that's uh, a nice uh, way to make this modified, leave it thick at the end so that you can uh, secure it in the Toffelmeyer retainer. It's a little tricky to put on. I like to kind of loop it over the tooth and then uh, sometimes have the assistant hold the rubber dam down. I'm grabbing hold of the rubber dam forceps and I'm going to release them from the tooth and slip the band underneath. Watch this. Here it goes right there. Tricky tricky. Now the, the retainer is now helping to secure the, the band in place. You just don't need a wedge. Um, after applying your, your various bonding agents, uh, this video is not about bonding agents. You're all going to use whatever system you like using and having all that light cured. We're now ready to go with uh, either a flowable composite or a resin modified glass enamer or a traditional glass enamer in that gingival. I frequently use uh, Fuji 9 or some other type of glass ionomer down here. And so now we've got a little gingival, gingival increment that uh, adheres quite nicely. Um, you can use uh, basically whatever product you think is best for your practice and best for your patients. 
And now uh, you don't need to have a sectional matrix in this particular case. Um, if we were working in approximately, we would, but because we're gonna have access to contouring the interproximal areas, we can use a, a simple uh, Toffelmeyer type retainer. I'm now gonna introduce these new composite instruments. This is the PL2 uh, and the PC2. And basically this is a titanium nitride coated instrument. Uh, and I've had them coated in blue because I just dig the color, it's kind of fun. And we can push this little increment over with this uh, PL2, PC2. And then I can use the PX12, which is a little bit wider and is very thin. It's, it's less than 250 microns thick. And so it's really great for getting into embrasure areas interproximally. And so these instruments uh, here, these are my, my prototypes. This is the GR12. And I'll talk about these instruments a little bit later in the video. Uh, I, I just, I think they're going to uh, be a welcomed addition to your armamentaria. I think, uh, and I've tried to design them with efficiency and precision in mind. You can see how sharp the, the end of this instrument is. There's really nothing like this on the market today. Uh, and I think dentistry needed something like this. And so I'm hoping you agree. And um, you, can, you can take a look at uh, the links that we can provide in the video later. I have a hard time marketing things that I make. I really do. Uh, I feel a little bit embarrassed by it. But at the same time, I, I think if it's good, we should share it, you know? And, and if someone else made this thing, I would be sharing it with you and saying, my gosh, these composite instruments are, are just amazing. Uh, okay, and then we like here this little portion, the little fill. Now we're using the TR12. This is curvolinear. Uh, it's the only one of its kind. It, it, they just No one has made an instrument like this that I have ever found that works with composite. Uh, it's curvolinear, so it's not straight. It's shaped so that it'll help create the triangular ridge three-dimensionally. And now, of course, we cure these incrementally. We're just doing the wall and lobe technique. It's a very routine approach that we do in our practice. Uh, this way, by doing these increments, we can focus on one part of the tooth at a time, and we don't have to worry about polymerization stresses quite as much because our increments are small. And I think that it's just nice to have control over uh, one area at a time so we can keep our mind focused on just what we're trying to do in that little precise local area with our loops on, uh, as relaxed as we can be, and make the anatomy flow with the original, looking at the adjacent tooth, thinking about what clues you have on the tooth structure, that was not part of the preparation that you can follow. And we're just using some of the other uh, composite instruments that we've come up with that all have a very specific purpose. So this is the Stevenson Composite Master Set. And there are seven instruments. I'm just showing you six here today. We came up with another one. These are, uh, so you're gonna have 14 different ends to these instruments. And we're gonna have it color coded so that you know which to use first, second, and third, you know, going from light to dark rather than being confused by some strange, somewhat arbitrary color sequence. Um, you know, so for example, as a plugger, you'd want to use a PL1 because this plugger is small. It would be great for, for you know, uh, small preparations. This is good for medium-sized preparations and centripetal wall placement. And then the PL2 is, is good for larger composites. And then we got the PX1, PX2, which is like an IPC, but wider and more, has more utility, particularly in the anterior. And then the TR12 is curvilinear, gives us the triangular ridges that we want. We have a groove placer, which is really small and skinny for excellent little secondary grooves. And then we have a fossa former. I'm really, really excited about this cassette. Uh, and all the instruments in it, I think it's going to be really well received. So getting back to the tooth, we're gonna to then use OptiDiscs. These are my favorite uh, for the most part. I think that they are uh, all around uh, just a great disc system. And uh, they, they, as the ISO requirement is, go from dark to light, that's what they do. And so we start with the darkest one, which I refer to as the plum color. And uh, 
uh, use it with the, the disc moving at all times and rotating the disc from composite to tooth whenever possible when it's practical to do so and using it with copious amounts of air spray or water spray which I'm not doing here of course because I'm doing this by myself but it, it is something that that is really um, helpful to keep things cool and that'll help prevent the white lines that you often find when you're finished polishing your composites. Keep them cool and keep the disc running from the composite to the tooth structure in that particular direction, whether they're clockwise or counterclockwise. So you'll, you'll constantly be changing the direction. Right here, change direction and so on. So uh, you're, you're keeping the direction in that particular manner. And I think you can do a really good job of almost getting a polished surface with this lemon, the last one. I call it the lemon. This is 7102 carbide, probably the all around best worker for anatomy that I think that uh, I have found. Uh, it's not too wide, it's not too thin. It's got a very sharp uh, point to it so that you can get down into the anatomical areas of the grooves. Although with the, that little Stevenson set, you ha have very little to do, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and remove the, the PM18, uh, RGS instrument, uh, which is a titanium nitride coated clamp, and then use the Diacomp Featherlight Green, and then we're gonna uh, follow up with the Diacomp Featherlight Gray. I also will occasionally use the Cosmodent cups and points on the occlusal, but I just didn't find in this particular case that that was absolutely necessary, uh, but if, maybe for a larger composite, that would be something advisable. And once again, lots of air spray, keep them cool. Water spray is really critical and a light touch. We don't wanna generate heat. Now, by the time this composite is placed, uh, the tooth has dehydrated and so the composite takes on a less beautiful shade. But in terms of the fit and polish, I think uh, for a GEEM procedure, a gingerly extensive margin elevation, class two composite, we have an awesome result. If you're interested in the composite set, it is available for early purchase. You can reserve a set today for a major discount and follow the link in the video provided here. Thanks everybody, take care.